Today, I'm going to show you how to connect your Home Assistant devices to both Google Home and Apple Home. And a similar method works for Alexa as well. So stick around if you want to know how. Home Assistant is a great way of bringing all your devices into one place. Now you might control your devices via automations or maybe the Home Assistant companion app. In our house, we use lots of different methods such as Zigbee buttons, but we also still use Google Voice Assistants for controlling things like turning on the TV or some lights. Now the Home Assistant team has been working on both software and hardware for a Voice Assistant for the last couple of years or so and it's come a very long way. And it can even do some things that the Google devices can't do, such as initiating a conversation itself from the voice assistant. Hey, would you like the TV turning on? Oh yes please, thank you. The TV has been turned on. But there are other areas, such as wait word detection when the TV's on with background noise, that it's just not quite as good as. So I've still got the Google devices for now. So let's take a look and see how we can set it up so that we can link these Home Assistant devices to our Google Home. So the first thing to mention is that we'll be connecting these ecosystems together using Matter, which means that all of the communication will be local on your network and doesn't need to go off to the internet and back, making it really responsive. The only exception to this is that if you're using the Google Voice Assistant, then the speech processing is still done in the Google Cloud. But if you're using the Google Home Hub or using the Google Home app on your phone, then it's all going to be local. The way this is going to work is that we're going to install a Home Assistant add-on called Home Assistant Matter Hub, which as the name suggests, acts as a Matter Hub so that Google, Apple or Amazon Alexa can connect to it. It allows you to choose which Home Assistant entities you want to expose as a Matter device. You can include your entities a few different ways, but I would recommend using labels as your primary method. I just created a label in Home Assistant called Matter and added that label to the sensors that I wanted to expose via Matter. Because we're using an add-on, this means that you do need to be running the full Home Assistant OS because the Docker and other versions don't include the add-on store. The installation and setup process is really simple and if you've used custom add-ons before, then you'll know most of the steps already. You need to go to Settings, add-ons and click add-on store in the bottom right corner. Then click the three dots in the top right corner and select repositories. Then go to the link that I've put in the description where you can find the URL for the repository that you need. You should then see an add-on section by Tobster which has the Home Assistant Matter Hub add-on. If it's not showing up then press Ctrl F5 to force refresh your page. Then just click into it and press install. Give it a couple of minutes to install and then press start to start the add-on. Also whilst you're there, toggle on the watchdog and show in sidebar options. Then you'll have an option called Matter Hub in the left menu bar which will take you into the add-on itself. There won't be much to see to start with, so just click the button called Create New Bridge in the top right. Technically we're creating what is called a Matter Bridge, and this virtual device will show up in Google Home. Both the integration and the Matter standard can only currently support certain types of devices, and here's the list of the ones that are supported. But as you can see, automation, scripts and input booleans are supported, which basically means you can support anything, even if it means that you might have to use a Home Assistant script to trigger that device. The other limitation is that to add additional devices to your bridge, you unfortunately have to go into the bridge and modify it. For example, if you assign a label of Matter to a new entity in Home Assistant, it won't pick it up automatically. You have to click the three dots next to the bridge, press edit, then scroll to the bottom and press save again. However, the nice thing is that as soon as you've done that, then Google will discover your new device and add it automatically. The final limitation we'll come on to in a minute, but firstly we need to get this bridge set up. In the include section, add your different entities. In my example, as you can see, I'm using a label as I mentioned earlier. There's also an entity exclusion section, which might come in handy if you're using something like an area to add your devices instead. Once you save the bridge settings, it will show you a list of the entities it's identified, as well as a QR code, which is the matter pairing code. 
If you've set up a Matter device before, then you'll have probably done the steps before by scanning the QR code on a Matter device or maybe in the manual that you bought for the device. The integration also shows you the manual pairing code, which I think you might need for adding it to Amazon Alexa. And it's a good alternative for the QR code in some instances. Now the next steps are either going to work perfectly or they're just not going to work at all. Matter is designed to work with devices on the same network and it uses IPv6 for communication. So if you've got a complex setup with VLANs, then I recommend that you have all of your Matter devices and Matter controllers in the same VLAN. Now it is actually possible to get Matter working across VLANs, but it's complicated and it compromises your security because Google devices don't support DHCP v6. And if you don't understand what any of this means, then don't worry and let's move on. Now just open up the Google Home app on your phone, press add, and then Matter enable device, and then scan the QR code of the Matter bridge using your phone's camera. Hopefully after a minute or two, it'll tell you that your new devices have been added to Google Home. So the final limitation that I wanted to mention is that for some strange reason, as far as I know, the Matter standard doesn't support the passing of data about the room that the device is in. And so you will have to manually add each of your devices into a room in Google. You should then be good to go. And you can see that controlling the device from the Google Home app is almost instant. There are a couple of other things to mention. In the add-on, there is the ability to create more than one Matter bridge. This might be useful if you want to expose, say, different devices to different ecosystems, but each bridge has to run on a specific port number. The default port is 5540, and some ecosystems are more tolerant than others to using different ports. For example, to connect to Alexa, you must use port 5540 or it won't work. I would recommend just sticking to one bridge if you can, and once you've connected it to something like Google Home, then you can use that app to share your devices with other ecosystems such as Apple or Alexa. You can't just scan the same QR code in each ecosystem though, because that's just not how Matter works. To do this in Google Home on Android, you need to find the Matter Bridge device, in my case Home Assistant, click Linked Matter Apps and Services, and then click Link Apps and Services. It should now show you a list of all the different Matter ecosystems that it's found. You can either click one of those and then follow the instructions, or if you scroll to the right, then you should get options to retrieve the manual pairing code or a QR code that you can scan in the other ecosystems app. I first shared my Home Assistant devices with Google Home, and then from there use that QR code in the Google Home app to add my devices to Apple Home. Also, you might not know that you can control Matter devices just with an iPad or iPhone as long as it's running iOS 18.5. And that means you don't need to have an Apple TV or an Apple HomePod. As you can see here, the devices have been added to my iPad. And just like in the Google Home app on my Android phone, I can now control this lamp and it's nearly instant. The final thing to mention is that this add-on does create an uncertified Matter Bridge. In most instances, you can just accept the warning, but unfortunately, some ecosystems don't allow connection of uncertified Matter Bridges. This is a shame because Acara, for example, allows you to pair third-party bridges, but unfortunately, it doesn't work with this add-on because it only supports certified bridges. I hope Acara changes this in the future, though, because it'd be really nice to be able to control these devices from the Acara app as well. I hope this video was useful to you and if it was then leave a comment down below with your thoughts and experiences if you've already used this great add-on. Well that's it for today so thanks until next time.